talking about system.windows.forms.timer. So if you remember in our previous video, we talked about system.threading.timer and uh, system.threading.timer, we know that it runs its callbacks on thread pool threads and it was re-entrant. Re-entrant means that if the callback takes more time than its interval, then there will be another thread from thread pool execute the callback. And the system.windows.forms.timer, this timer actually always, this always runs uh, on the GUI thread. GUI thread is the thread which creates all the Windows GUI controls. And in, and in Windows, actually, if you want to interact with the GUI controls, if you want to modify them and use them, it's only the Windows GUI thread. That means the thread which has created those controls can touch those controls. No other thread can touch them. And that's called the concept of thread affinity. So all the controls have thread aff affinity to its creator. So if the thread has the main thread or the GUI thread creates its children controls, it's only the GUI thread which can change them or modif modify them or touch them. And that's the big difference. The system.windows.forms.timer always runs on GUI thread. Always runs on GUI thread. And it has its own advantage and disadvantage. The advantage is that you can touch the GUI controls and then directly, since it's the GUI thread which is running the timer and you can modify them, use them, or whatever you want to do with your UI controls. Disadvantage is that if you are running some time taking task like if you are cal you are running some calculation which can take time then your GUI thread will be blocked for that amount of time and then you cannot do anything uh, with your UI so your UI will be freezed because that's your, because your GUI thread is busy he is busy in calculating or doing some time taking operation and that's the disadvantage. So we should be very careful while, while we want to use the timer from window, system.windows.forms.timer. But it, it has its own advantage. If we want to, let's say, just update a label or do something very quickly, then it's beneficial. Then we don't have to marshal our call to GUI thread. We can directly change that. So let's see the example. So let's create a system. You can have a private variable here, private system.windows.forms.timer. And then it's timer like this. And then we can initialize it timer equals to new timer. It has two overloaded constructor. One is default, which takes no parameter. Another one, which takes a system dot component model dot i container. It can be any container which implements this i container interface. But <clears throat> for now, we will be looking only this one. And here, <clears throat> we can just say we can put the interval, whatever you want. Let's say one second. And then we can enable this. There is property called enable. So you can enable or disable through this property. It's a boolean true. And when we were using the timer from system.threading.timer class, then we will be giving it the delegate. We were we had the timer callback delegate, but here it's an event, so we can subscribe to that event from this timer class. And which is called tick timer dot tick and then this will be the event will be 
happening every every second or every uh, the font let's change the font little bit like this and like this and then we will get this timer tick event per second that's the per interval one is in time in milliseconds so let's change our lbl we have a label text dot text equals to let's say date time date time dot now and let's see if we run this we should see the per second yes if the tag is changing every second 14 59 39 40 and and no problem it's no problem because we are running on the GUI thread we can print actually the we can print here the ID of our GUI thread let's say if we say LBL output dot text equals to dollar and then we can access thread dot current thread dot managed thread ID and we can say GUI thread and we can print the ID here also to see which thread is calling this timer underscore tick event handler and then we can say thread dot current thread dot manage thread id let's see gui thread is one and if you click this the id is one here also and then we can we can see that the timer tick event handler is is executing on the gui thread now let's say this thread is blocked it's doing some some work for five seconds what will happen then actually this is the same thread which is handling the graphical user interface and this is the thread which will be sleeping here that's a simulation of work like we are doing some calculation or whatever we are doing it's a uh, it's busy for five seconds and in that period of time the whole GUI will be freezed and that we will see now let's see and now you see it's it's, it's freezed it takes five seconds it will run and then again it was just freezed does not change and that's the that's the drawback of this uh, mechanism or of this threading system dot threading dot you know, system dot windows dot forms dot timer if it takes too much time we should not be running operations which may take time since our GUI thread is blocked we can also see I have a button here if we simulate it through this we can say GUI thread and it's now running and if I press the button the GUI thread will be blocked for five seconds like this and then the whole GUI is freezed and now now it's coming has come back you can enable disable the timer by or enable or you, you can stop or start whenever you want but basically the point to remember with with windows system dot windows dot forms dot timer is to actually use it only if you want to just update something and we are not taking we are not running any long time taking tasks the another thing in this video I want to actually show is that if we are touching the GUI controls on any other uh, or any other thread, 
then we get an exception so if i say thread pool thread pool dot q user work item uh, update label for example if i do it like this and if i change anything if i touch any let's say label lbl output dot text let's say thread pool thread then we will get the exception immediately and we can run it when we let's say clicking the button and then we get the exception cross thread operation not valid this is control lbl output accessed from a thread other than the thread it was created on and that's the cross thread exception so you no other thread can actually touch the gui controls other than the thread which has created them and that's what i was talking about you can fix it you can marshal this to the gui thread but that's we will see in some other video so yeah that's the that's all with system.windows.forms.timer uh, in the next video we will be looking at system.timer which is another kind of time which is hybrid timer which has the functionality of both system.threading.timer and system.windows.forms.timer so yeah so for now that was it please write the comments and any ask questions if you have any Till the next video, goodbye.